We're hearing from victims of one of the country's most notorious and bizarre mass kidnappings. 43 years ago, 20, 26 California children and their driver were taken from a school bus and buried alive. One of the three kidnappers has a parole hearing this morning. The abductions took place in the central California city of Chowchilla. Our lead national correspondent, David Begno, is looking into the case for 48 hours. David, the facts of this case, if you hadn't heard about it before, still chilling. Look, it's terrifying, right? Imagine this, right? So little kids on the school bus with their driver during the summer, they're on their way home in the middle of nowhere, and they just vanish, yeah. like vanish without a trace. Right. And so there's been a parole hearing, you know, nearly every three years for the last 40 or so. And can you imagine the trauma for people who are now adults who are still reliving what happened to them when they were just children. I was wondering how it was going to feel to die. I was too scared to move. It was 1976, 26 terrified children, some as young as five, and their school bus driver, Ed Ray, were kidnapped at gunpoint by three armed men. The first man came on the bus and he had a gun. Ed Ray said, what's going on? And he said, shut up and move to the back. The kidnappers who planned to ask for a $5 million ransom drove the kids to a rock quarry where a truck trailer had been hidden underground about 12 feet. They forced the children inside through a hole in the roof and buried them alive. And I felt like I was an animal going to the slaughterhouse. It would be silent. And then somebody would bust out crying and the oh, whole would just erupt. After about 12 hours, the roof started to cave in. And I remember children just screaming and crying. The sides of the van were bowing in. I knew that I was going to die. I knew it. They were able to escape, digging their way out and getting to safety. But those 28 hours of terror would impact the rest of their lives. By the time I was 21, I was using meth, I was smoking crack. When you've gone through something that's so traumatic, it's hard to go back and be a normal kid again. It has now been 43 years, and those survivors are still piecing their lives back together. I have nine years sober. My resentment for them was killing me. One night, I was laying in bed and I said, God, help me to forgive them. And forgive he did. That was Larry Park. Larry met with one of the kidnappers, Richard Schoenfeld, and he said it changed his life, that he was finally at peace when that happened. Richard and his brother James were both paroled within the last seven years. The third kidnapper, alleged mastermind Frederick Woods, his latest parole hearing is today in California. So, David, I have so many questions here, and I know you're going to get a lot of them in, yeah. on the, in the, the show on Saturday, but so why is Woods in prison, but the Schoenfeld brothers are out? So he was caught with pornography and a cell phone, and he wasn't a model prisoner for the last many decades. Mm -hmm. uh, and today, what I can tell you is this, there will be evidence put forward that he still has not been a model prisoner. It's interesting to see the trauma that still stays with him 43 years later. I was so in, vivid. Yes, yeah, so vivid. I was in college, I remember, because it was so eerie, you'd never heard anything like that. But to see the pictures of them, David, as little kids, and yeah. then to, to segue to them as adults, you can still see their little faces. In the hour on Saturday night, Gail, when yeah. you listen to people like Larry and others like Mike Marshall, um, their lives literally fell apart. I mean, this happened to them at such an innocent age. Yeah. And for the last 40 years, they have just struggled yeah. to get through life. The past is still entirely present for them. Absolutely. And imagine a parole. There have been more than 60 parole hearings in the last 40 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, David, thank you very much.